Mickey, can you hear us? I got you. Perfect. All right, here we go. Uh, we'll start, hit the raise your hand function, and we'll call on you. And a reminder, please mute your, uh, your line after you ask the question. We'll start with David Ubbin. Chris, when you went back and, and looked at 2019, what, how did you sort of explain of Jarrett's struggle and how do you work on that and sort of uh, try and preventing those in, in 2020? What does that development kind of look like? Yeah, you look back and it's, I think any situation you run into like the struggles we had early in the season, right? And you, and you can't allow those to snowball. So I think it was a constant communication every day with him, regardless of what happened, whether he was pulled or he, had an opportunity to start or he came into a game, I think it was, there was communication with him every day that he had to stay the course and continue to believe in himself. And as we all know, who's ever played this position, I mean, there's times where you're playing with a whole lot of confidence. There's other times where you're not playing with any confidence. And I think um, that was probably the case early on with him when we lost early. And <clears throat> But credit to him, he stayed the course. And uh, I felt like he started to gain some more confidence. Uh, and then finish the season off right. We'll go to Vince Ferrar, followed by Patrick Brown. Coach Winky, Coach Pruitt mentioned the other day that uh, Harrison had really kind of shined in one period of a practice. Do you recall what that was like and what you guys saw that you really liked and what's your overall analysis of what you've seen from him since he missed a little bit of time? Yeah, he did miss a little bit of time, and that, and that always hurts. And for a guy that was able to, to come in early and, and not be able to go through spring ball um, hurts you a little bit in terms of your growth and development. And I think the biggest thing for him is he's learning a new language, right? And, and we always say that, hey, when you're, when you're not sure, you're going to probably play a little bit slower. I think the biggest thing with him is continue to progress, continue to learn the system. Um, he can make all the throws. There's no doubt about it. Um, what you're trying to create with this young man is one, an understanding of exactly what we're asking him to do and then be able to process the information and then do it with a sense of urgency. And that's hard right now for any young quarterback. So I think uh, what he was able to do on a couple of concepts uh, the other day in practice when he got back, he was comfortable. He knew him, he felt comfortable, he knew the coverage and the ball came out. Now we have to create that consistency with every play in our playbook. And I think you'll see that that growth continue to, to move forward as he gets more comfortable and gets more reps. Coach, with, uh, with, with, with JT Stroud, what's the biggest difference uh, you see in him and, and kind of where does he go from, from here after the, the way he's performed so far this preseason? Yeah, you know, JT's a guy that, that works his tail off. This guy is, uh, he studies the game. He spends extra time in here watching film. It's important to him. And, and that's evident. You see that every day from this young man. And, and I think the advantage now going into that second year of this same offense with Coach Chaney, I think all the guys are a little more comfortable, with the exception of Harrison, who hasn't been in this offense. But J.T. Shroud is, is very conscious of, of every move that he makes. And sometimes, um, you know, when you get to be too careful, right, um, you start to overthink. I think he needs to continue to trust himself. I tell the guys all the time, one of the biggest things we talk about is eye discipline. Know what you're looking at and then see what you're looking at, right? And they're kind of going, well, wait a second, coach. But at the end of the day, JT can make all the throws. He throws it as good as a lot of guys that I've been around. And I think his familiarity now with the offense is allowing him uh, to, to, to operate at a much faster pace right now. We have to eliminate the mistakes. And that goes for all the quarterbacks. But I think if we can eliminate the disastrous plays, whether it's one a practice or it's five a practice, we can eliminate those. You'll see great progress at that position. We'll go to Brent Hubs, followed by Blake Topmeyer. Coach, you're a former quarterback. You, you played in multiple systems, you know, from one year to the next. From your personal experience, how big is it for Jared to have the same, you know, the same language for the first time in two years? And in part two of that is what is your assessment of those new receivers? Yeah, I think there's no doubt. You see the confidence in, in Jarrett. Um, having the opportunity to spend the whole offseason really studying this offense, watching a lot of film. I'll tell you what, I give a lot of credit to him. During this, this whole pandemic, when it started, I talked to him every single day, and there wasn't a day that I talked to him that he wasn't doing something to help himself get better, working out, throwing. Um, he came in here weighing about 228 pounds, uh, looks great, trying to keep all that weight on right now. But I think 
you see a different level of confidence in him because he has a better understanding of exactly what we're trying to get accomplished on every single play. So uh, the second year in a system, as I mentioned or alluded to earlier, there's no doubt. There's just so much more familiarity and, and you just see him be more comfortable and he operates faster. And I think right now he's operating at a high level. So, um, you know, it's fun to be out there with those young receivers. You know, there, there's a group of talented young receivers that one, just like a young quarterback, they've got to learn the system and the nuances of exactly what we're trying to get accomplished, predicated on coverage or different types of releases and all that. But tell you what, we got a lot of speed on the field now, and I know the quarterback's like that. Blake? Hey, Chris, uh, where does Brian Maurer fit into this uh, this competition, and, and what's the, uh, the offseason sort of look like or uh, in the preseason look like for him? Yeah, you know, he's he's hampered and slowed down a little bit with a hamstring right now. So he's not, the last few practices hasn't been able to operate in all of our team periods. Uh, he's still coming out there every day. Um, I think Brian is another example of a guy that probably uh, as a young guy last year, didn't know exactly every detail of, of what we were trying to get accomplished, but continue to learn. He's very talented. There's no doubt he, he brings a lot to the table from that standpoint. I think he's grown up and he's matured. Uh, I think that's a big part of becoming a professional, right? We preach about that every single day, how to be a pro, how to learn, how to study, what's important. And I think you're seeing that in Brian Maurer. Uh, there's no doubt, uh, like I said, he, he, he's got as much talent as, as a lot of guys have ever been around. The ability to throw the football from different platforms, be able to run the football. Um, we just have to create some consistency with them. And that's with all of them, but I think especially Brian, a guy that uh, really in, at the end of the day, there's, there's, there's everybody competing on a daily basis. And that's what makes it so fun for me. The excitement uh, that I get to see in those three guys competing against each other um, is a lot of fun. And, and you get some ebbs and flows throughout the course of practice. And some guys are making great plays, but they're encouraging each other. So we've got a good room right now um, and there's good competition and there's nothing better than, and good competition. So I'm excited about that. We'll go to David Ubbin, followed by Rob Lewis. Yeah, Chris, where, where does that backup spot stand? And, and do you feel you want to uh, have a sense of who's one, two, three, four, kind of somewhat solidified before you go into the opener? Yeah, I think those decisions will be made down the road as we continue to evaluate on a daily basis. And, you know, uh, we track every throw that these guys make and, and we have, we have charts that quantify exactly what takes takes place every time they're touching the ball. We preach every time um, we walk out on the field is protect the football, right? It's the most important thing. How do you protect the football? We get to touch it on every play. So you can protect it by the decisions that you make, obviously protect it where you're throwing the football. And then when you have the ability to be able to escape and get out of the pocket, are we protecting it there? So, um, you know, with all that being said, uh, we're too early on to say, hey, where do they fall in the pecking order? I love it that we get to go out every day and those guys know that we're going to try to get equal reps and they're going to compete every day. Um, and then the cream is going to rise to the top. So it's a process that's, that's taking place currently. Um, I can't put my finger on, on a date necessarily that you're going to decide, hey, who's the guy? But what we're looking for is is progress each and every day. And those guys are, they are getting better. So it's, it's fun to, to watch them compete. Rob? Coach, you obviously know the position and you know what it's like to play quarterback in a highly scrutinized program. Um, so, so you know what Jared was going through after that Alabama game last year when it was, you know, he was just kind of in the middle of a, of a tornado. How was it watching him bounce back from that? And how did you help him kind of deal with all that? Yeah, you know what? And, and, in those situations, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I've been in them. So uh, fortunately for our guys, uh, they've got a guy that's coaching them that understands it and has been through it. So I'm not talking about something that I don't understand. So I think it was my job not only to, to, to continue to coach them and teach them exactly what we want them to do, but more importantly, in those times of need and those, those tough times, that to, to be able to, to talk through those things and, and be able to be there uh, as support, right, and still challenge them to to continue to rise above those those things. So, when it's all said and done, um, I think it was it was refreshing to watch him probably be at his lowest of lows, 
and, and then rebound. And it was continuous talking every single day about what we're trying to get accomplished and just take it one day at a time. And then things will start to come together. And as we saw, they, they did for him later in the season. We'll go to Rick Russo, followed by Ben McKee. <clears throat> hey, Chris, you know, playing and coaching football is, is tough enough, but having to do it during the times we're living in, I'm curious what that's been like from your perspective. Yeah, we've learned a, it's kind of a new way of living, right? And, and uh, what, what was kind of fun for me was, you know, even while we were away, we were able to, to stay in touch with our players and, and kind of just learn new ways through technology to be able to continue to coach and, and teach these guys. And they've bought in, they've been, they've been outstanding. And, you know, and, and now it's almost become the norm for us. So um, it was interesting early on and trying to deal with it with the uncertainty and the unknowns. We, nobody likes that. But um, now that, that we've made that adjustment and we're kind of used to it, um, it's been fun. You know, I mean, it's it, having to do Zoom calls obviously isn't, uh, as good as, as being in person with the guys, but you're still able to accomplish a lot of things. And we were, we were able to continue to grow throughout that period. And now we're in a situation where we get to do, we do get to spend time with them. So um, it was interesting, but we, we found a way. And, and I always say this, don't complain, don't explain, find solutions. And uh, we found a solution to continue to develop these guys um, through uncertain times. Coach, you mentioned that JG is operating at a high level right now. Just what is he doing to operate at a high level? And are those uh, things that he has tweaked since since last <laughs> season entering this fall camp? Well, one, I think he, as I alluded to earlier, he focused on his body, making sure he's big, strong, and fast. And, and uh, he focused on those physical sides of it. But more importantly, uh, when I say operating at a high level, that's becoming a functional thinker, taking the information and being able to process it and then execute the play. And you just see him so much faster with his feet, with his decisions. Um, his anticipation, in my opinion, has probably been the brightest spot since I've seen from a year ago. Um, and, and now that he understands the big picture, he can see it and anticipate things much better now because he's more comfortable. So um, it's collectively really knowing and understanding and then physically being able to put it together. And, and he's operating as good as I've seen him since I've been here. Last question, Vince. Coach Wicky, can you talk about the running threat at the quarterback position in college football, how important you feel that is to at least have an, a, a, somewhat of an ability to run the football from that position? Yeah, there's no doubt. The way the game is now, um, you know, I think if you, if you look at it from a defensive coordinator's perspective, they go into, into game plan, they say, does a guy have the ability to hurt his legs or does he not? And I think their approach changes. Uh, when you go into a ball game, I think the thing is, is right now we're not necessarily uh, in an offense that's saying, hey, let's be expect a quarterback to run, you know, 10 or 15 a game. We're just not doing it. That's not our offense. But what we are asking them to do is our run games automatically built in with a quarterback when something breaks down in the passing game. And so what we've been able to teach them is that, listen, there are opportunities to run the football. Um, maybe it's the third and three. And we get hemmed up and, and there's nothing available, we're going to have to scramble and get a first down. So uh, you see across the country, there's different types of offenses with the dudes and the quarterback maybe more than we are. Um, we're not going to totally remove him from the run game because we will have some stuff in our offense to ask them to carry the football. But at the end of the day, uh, we can't be a statue back there. You've got to have the ability to be able to, to execute um, when you get out of the pocket. And, and sometimes that's where the biggest plays are made. And, and along the same line, one of our big focuses of the last couple of practices is, hey, once we do escape, let's get into scramble mode, right? And we've made some big plays once the quarterback has escaped the pocket. So um, I'm excited about where we are in, in terms of what the quarterbacks have done with their feet when the opportunities were available. Hey, thanks, Coach Winky. We appreciate it. Well, hey, good seeing you guys.